Throughout the decades, there have been several great two-way players who left their lasting imprint on the league. Guys like Akeem Olajuwon, Scottie Pippen, Gary Payton, and even more recent stars like Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. But one of the all-time great two-way players who seems to fly under the radar everywhere other than on my channel is the Milwaukee Bucks legend Sidney Moncrief. This 6'4 point guard slash shooting guard was an absolute problem in the 1980s. For some reason, he's rarely mentioned when discussing the all-time great two-way players. But back in his era, everyone knew that he was one of the most dreaded one-on-one -on -one matchups in the entire league and on both ends of the court. So in order for us to understand what kind of player he was, let's start as we always do by taking it back to the beginning of his career. Moncrief was drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks with a fifth overall pick in the 1979 draft out of the University of Arkansas. Obviously, Magic Johnson took all of the headlines as the first pick in that historic draft. But the next best player to come out of the class of 79 was in fact Moncrief. He had a somewhat slow start to his career, and in his rookie season, he averaged just 8 points in 20 minutes of action, on a Bucks team that was still finding its groove. He didn't truly arrive until his third season in the league, which was his first year as an NBA All-Star. As the team's leader in points, assists, and rebounds, he led his Bucks to a 55-27 record, good enough for the second seed in the Eastern Conference. As a solid pickpocket and a smothering on-ball defender, there's a good chance that he would have won the Defensive Player of the Year award that season if the award had actually existed at that point in history. But his time would soon come after. The Defensive Player of the Year award was introduced to the NBA in the 1982-83 season, and Moncrief went on to win the award in its first two seasons of existence in 1983 and 1984. To this very day, he's the only guard in NBA history to win the award multiple times. Not only was he a lockdown defender, but his skills continued to improve on the offensive end. As an athletically gifted slasher, he had his best season offensively in 1983, where he averaged over 22 points per game on 52.4% shooting. Typically, 6'4 guards struggle to be a high scorer while averaging north of 50% from the field. Not only did Moncrief do that in 1983, but he actually shot better than 50% from the field over the course of his career. From 1982 to 1986, he was an all-star in five straight seasons. But beyond the fact that his individual abilities were shining, he was also leading his team to be a consistent contender in the Eastern Conference. For some reason, when people talk about the 1980s Eastern Conference, people seem to only think of the Celtics, the Pistons, the Bulls, and the 76ers. But the thing is, the Bucks were always in that mix as well. From 1981 to 1987, Moncrief led his Bucks to have at least 50 wins in 7 straight seasons, including trips to the Eastern Conference Finals in 1983, 1984, and 1986. One shocking accomplishment was when his Bucks swept Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics out of the 1983 semifinals, four games to zero. Larry Bird has since went on to describe that series as the most embarrassing moment of his life. In those semifinals, Moncrief led all players in scoring while leading his team in assists and steals. Eliminating Bird and the Celtics in the midst of their dynasty days was no easy task. But one of the greatest achievements of his career is what he accomplished in the 1985 NBA playoffs. When people think of Michael Jordan's playoff exits before Scottie Pippen developed into a co-star, they usually think of their losses at the hands of the Celtics and Pistons. But the thing is, neither of those teams were actually the first team to eliminate Michael Jordan from the playoffs. That was Sidney Moncrief and his Milwaukee Bucks. With the help of his co-star, Terry Cummings, the Bucks dominated the Bulls, winning the series in four games, three games to one. In that historic series, the two-time Defensive Player of the Year winner, Sidney Moncrief, contained Michael Jordan to only 43.6% shooting over the course of the series. And then, when it came to the offensive end, Sidney averaged 26.5 points, nearly 5 rebounds, and nearly 5 assists, on far greater than 50-40-90 percentages over the course of the series. 
At the end of the day, I can't say enough positive things about this incredibly overlooked guard. Being the only guard to win back-to-back -back DPOYs is a special achievement in and of itself. But doing it in an era where he had to consistently guard guys like Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, Dominique Wilkins, and Clyde Drexler is just overwhelmingly impressive. Although he was one of the best players in the league during his prime, and although he's one of the greatest two-way players of all time, unfortunately, he didn't have very great longevity due to his degenerative knee issues and significant heel issues that drastically limited his productivity as he entered his late 20s. The drop-off was dramatic, and by the age of 29, he was only a shell of what he once was. At the age of 31, he retired from the NBA and spent an entire year away from professional basketball. When he was 33 years old, he came back to the NBA as a member of the Atlanta Hawks, but he only had very minor contributions throughout the course of the regular season. He did manage to have one amazing flashback when he dropped 23 points in just 22 minutes in Game 4 of the first round against Detroit. The Hawks were eventually eliminated in five games, and Moncrief shelved his sneakers for good. In total, he made five All-Star teams, five All-NBA teams, five All-Defense teams, and was a two-time Defensive Player of the Year winner, and is a Basketball Hall of Famer. Some of the greatest players of all time remember the impact of Moncrief quite well. For example, Michael Jordan said this about the Bucks star, when you play against Moncrief, you're in for a night of all-around basketball. He'll hound you everywhere you go, both ends of the court. You just expect it. Larry Bird had this to say as well. Moncrief does everything you're supposed to do on defense and doesn't take any shortcuts. Plus, he does it every night. To me, what's mind-blowing is how he's rarely discussed among the greatest perimeter defenders in NBA history. Usually guys like Gary Payton, Michael Jordan, and even Kobe Bryant take all of the spotlight. But I think if you ask players who actually played against him in the 1980s, there's a very good chance that they have Moncrief in the top spot overall ahead of all those other legends. As for myself personally, well, it's tough to rank players defensively when there's so much nuance involved. At the very least, I have him as a top 5 perimeter defender on my all-time rankings. So what do you guys think? How good was Moncrief in your own words? And who's a player in the modern NBA who's similar to him? I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.